Hello, I'm Dr. Evan Levine. I'm a cardiologist at Mount Sinai Medical Center, and I work in the Scarsdale Mount Sinai Clinic located in Scarsdale, New York. And today I thought I'd discuss something about hypertension, or high blood pressure, because about 80% of everyone's going to have hypertension at some time in their life. Two things I wanna to discuss today is number one, I'd like to discuss the definition of hypertension because things have changed over the years. Number one, normal blood pressure is less than 120 and less than 80. That's important to know. Now, elevated blood pressure, which used to be called borderline hypertension, is actually a blood pressure of 120 to 129 and less than 80. So if you have a blood pressure of 124, you have elevated blood pressure. And we're gonna discuss this and how to treat without medications because those patients do not require medication. If we continue on, we obtain something called stage one hypertension. And those are for folks with the systolic blood pressure of 130 to 139 or a diastolic blood pressure of 80 to 89. Finally, we have stage two hypertension. And these patients essentially all need medication. And that's a systolic blood pressure of 140 or higher or 90 or elevated. Today, I really wanna focus on folks with elevated blood pressure and people with stage one hypertension without lots of other risk factors. Now you'll need to discuss this with your physician if you have stage one hypertension. Some people, can uh, do exercise and diet, and others may need medications. But no matter what stage you're in, let's not forget that it's not only about taking medication, it's also about diet and exercise. And that's what we're gonna talk about today because there's really a good way to lower your blood pressure with a good diet and exercise. And that's, that's pretty well established. So I hope you uh, focused on the slide I just presented. And we're gonna bring up another slide, which is going to talk about, hey, how can I naturally reduce that blood pressure? And again, I have elevated blood pressure or I have stage one hypertension and maybe I don't need medications yet and I don't wanna take medicines. Or even if I have stage two hypertension, I'd like to control my blood pressure somewhat in addition to medications with diet and exercise. Now, if we look at the next slide, this is a really important slide. The number one thing on top you're gonna to see is weight loss. Every kilogram of weight loss lowers your systolic blood pressure of about one millimeter or mercury. So let's say for every two pounds, you can lower that blood pressure by one point. 10 pounds, roughly five points of systolic blood pressure. 20 pounds, obviously, more like 10. So there's a really significant way to lower that blood pressure just with weight loss. But it's not only about weight loss, of course, it's about diet. Now, we recommend here a DASH diet, which is kind of like a Mediterranean diet, lots of fish, vegetables, fruits, nuts. But in the US, it's, they say it's okay to have some low fat dairy products as well. And if you look carefully, people with hypertension will really stick to that diet. They can lower their systolic blood pressure by as much as 10 to 11 millimeters of mercury. Now you see the game here. Everything is adding up. Weight loss, diet. Let's get to salt. Lower your salt intake. Most people know you can lower your blood pressure. And the important thing about lowering your salt intake is knowing where that salt comes from. Most people think, well, hey, if I don't add salt with the salt shaker, I'm on a low sodium diet, but that's not true. There's a lot of hidden salt, especially in the foods that you eat out, especially in things like processed meats and deli foods. And you should be really well read about that. So before you go and have that deli sandwich, realize there's a lot of salt in there. And again, you can lower that blood pressure by five or six millimeters of mercury, just changing your diet from a high sodium to a low sodium diet. Now, while sodium is bad for you, increased potassium intake is actually good. 
Now, again, if you have kidney disease or elevated potassium, you need to speak to your physician about that. But for most of us, a diet high in potassium, you know, most of us know bananas and oranges, et cetera, have high potassium, but things like avocados, one of the favorites for everyone today, has even more potassium than a banana. So again, increase your potassium, lower your sodium, and you see how the points add up. Five millimeters of weight loss, 11 healthy diet, decrease your sodium, increase potassium. It's possible you can lower your blood pressure by 20 millimeters of mercury or more. And now let's get to physical activity. Aerobic activity, dynamic resistance, exercises, isometric exercises by even doing hand grips. All of these can lower your systolic blood pressure by another four or five or six millimeters of mercury. Alcohol intake. While some folks claim that alcohol is good for you, especially maybe one drink or less a day, people that drink too much alcohol, well, they raise their blood pressure. And so if you're drinking for a man two or more drinks a day or a woman one or more drinks a day, that can raise your blood pressure by about four millimeters of mercury. So here we are, weight loss, healthy diet, lower the sodium, raise the potassium, exercise, different types, aerobic, isometric, reduce your alcohol intake. Now, not on this list is something else that people are not aware of. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, what is that? That's the ibuprofens, the, Mo the Motrins, the Aleves, medications you take for pain or you go to the dentist or whatever, and they give you something for pain. Now, if you have hypertension, those medicines can reduce the flow to the kidneys and raise your blood pressure. So you need to be cautious with that. So again, if you have elevated blood pressure, or stage one hypertension, and you don't need medicines yet, and you don't want to get on those medicines, there's a whole bunch of things you can do to lower your blood pressure. And if you have stage two hypertension, and you want that blood pressure better controlled, and the doctor said, hey, next visit, if your blood pressure is too high, we're going to have to add another medication. But you don't want to. You can, again, lose weight watch your diet and do exercise. And I think that's really important folks that a good, healthy, sound diet and exercise can help reduce your blood pressure. And by reducing your blood pressure, you can reduce the risk of heart attack, stroke, kidney failure and heart failure. And those are the important points for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this talk. Again, I'm Dr. Evan Levine. I'm in the Scarsdale Clinic and I wanna thank everyone at Mount Sinai in Manhattan, where I have access to some of the greatest physicians, not only in New York, but in the world, where I can send my patients for very complex procedures.